Hey everyone, Aaron here from MTG Challengers, and welcome to another Magic the Gathering deck tech. Today I'll be going over a Boros aggro deck that I built for the beginning of Journey into Nyx Standard. So, you guys know that I love playing White Weenie, it's my favorite deck. Uh, however, like most cases, uh, one color just doesn't usually give you all the flexibility that you need to answer the various threats in the format, so what I built here is basically a White Weenie deck that splashes red for a few things. Also, Iroas looks really amazing, and I know people are waiting to see just how good he can be, so that was another reason to build this deck. So let's get right into these specific cards here. Uh, first up, I have my 1-drops, the best of which is Soldier of the Pantheon. I have a playset of him, of course. Uh, this guy is just awesome in general. Uh, two powered creatures for one mana are ideal for aggro decks, and this is just about the best that they can get. His protection lets him block and attack through all of the problematic multicolored creatures that other aggressive and mid-range decks are playing, like Rakdos Cackler, Voice of Resurgence, and Boros Reckoner. And it also makes him immune to a good bit of removal, like Abrupt Decay, Dreadbore, and Detention Sphere. Up against Mono Black, he's just as vulnerable as any other creature, but again, you can't beat too powerful one mana. Next up is the other one drop I have, which is Dryad Militant, a playset here as well. Just another Savannah Lions type card, 2 1 for 1, which is ideal. There's not much to say about it other than that. The ability was relevant when Snapcaster decks were a thing in the last standard, but now it just does almost nothing. But again, it doesn't need to, it just needs to be a 2 1 for 1. I chose to run this over Boros Elite, just because I don't really like playing Battalion and Constructed, I feel like it's kind of a win more, and I'd rather have a 2 1 for 1 for sure all the time than a 1 1 that can become a 3 3 sometimes, but only if you're essentially winning the game already. And he's just a terrible top deck after a board wipe, so that's ultimately why I went with the Militant as the second one drop. Moving on up, I have a playset of Imposing Sovereign. Uh, just a truly incredible card up against a variety of matchups. Uh, it's basically the card that makes white aggressive decks better than their counterparts. If you get this out turn 2 in an aggro mirror, uh, you have so much advantage over them. Uh, it's great against haste guys like Spike Jester, Rakdos Shred Freak, and bigger ones like Stormbreath Dragon. It also makes flash shenanigans like Advent of the Worm really, really awkward for your opponent. And it's solid up against control matchups too. Uh, they love to use Elspeth to stabilize the game with all the blockers she creates. And there's just something hilarious about a round of Elspeth tokens all coming into play tapped. Then I have 4 Precinct Captain as my other 2 drop creature. He's really awesome up against the aggressive decks due to his first strike. You can profitably block all of the 1 and 2 toughness creatures like Rakdos Cackler, Voice of Resurgence, and Mutavault, which is the big one now. His token ability is also great since you can alpha strike your opponent and still have a blocker left over for whatever they're going to do next turn. And to top all of it off, his 2 devotion really helps out with getting Iroas online. Onto the 3 drops, I have 4 copies of Boros Reckoner. Uh, awesome creature for this deck for a variety of reasons. He's a great stabilizer since you can give him first strike, and a three powered creature with first strike just outclasses other aggressive decks. Like the captain, he's great against the little creatures, uh, even better because if you're blocking Voice of Resurgence, Mutavault, and whatnot, he'll still kill them without you having to give him first strike, so you'll kill it and get to redirect two damage and kill something else. And the 3 power is great for killing stuff like Sylvan Karyatid, which can be a really annoying blocker in the mid-range matchups. His damage redirection ability also makes him an amazing card up against red decks or any decks that use burn as their primary form of removal. So they lightning strike him or use Mizium Orders. Uh, he will die, but not without their life total or another one of their creatures taking a hit. In the mono black matchup though, I usually side a couple out, just because they mainly have direct kill spells, so he's not as good, and they have Bile Blight, which is the big one that makes Reckoner players really sad. Still, he's an awesome card to have, and even more so than the captain, his mana cost is amazing with Iroas. Now onto one of the best cards in the entire deck, Burma's King of Arescos. Uh, there's not much to say about this guy that's not awesome. 3-4 uh, Vigilance for 3 mana that gets you more Vigilance guys every turn is just an absurd deal. The tokens are great up against the aggressive matchups just to have blockers, and they will get out of hand very quickly with Spear of Heliod. His 4 toughness is awesome. Again, he will block basically all of the aggressive creatures, and it keeps him out of range of Lightning Strike and Bile Blight, which is pretty important. The tokens are also great up against Desecration Demon, just to keep sacrificing so you can keep attacking and keep the demon tap down. 
Having the tokens also mean that you can avoid sacrificing Bramaz himself to things like Devour Flesh. So Bramaz is really solid against Mono Black. And he's also really awesome with Iroas, uh, not just because of the mana cost, but because Iroas' ability doesn't require the creatures to be declared as attackers like some other cards do, so the tokens that trigger when he attacks will get all of the bonuses that the others get, which just makes blocking that much more awkward. He is legendary, but honestly, he's so good that you still want to play four of him. Now we have the last creature in the deck, and probably the one everyone's most excited for right now, Iroas God of Victory. I'm playing him as a 3 of. He's the main reason I wanted to splash red here. 7 power on a god is pretty serious business, and you will get to tap into that power pretty frequently in a deck filled with Boros Reckoners, Bramazes, and Precinct Captains. Beyond that, the abilities themselves are just amazing. They're probably the two things that aggressive decks want most, to make their creatures harder to block, and keep them from dying when they are blocked. The bonuses and advantages he gives you up against other aggressive decks should be obvious, but he can also be very good against uh, control decks. Again, they like to use Elspeth to stabilize with the three tokens, so even if they come into play untapped, their three tokens will still only be able to block one guy, and that one attacker will have all the damage prevented. So having this guy as a finisher, I think, is going to be awesome, and it might even take white splash red aggro to tier 1 status. Only three of him, since he has a 4 drop, which is definitely the absolute top of where you want your aggressive decks to be, and he is legendary, so a playset wouldn't really be wise. So that's it for the creatures, moving on to the other spells. Uh, Boros Charm is another reason to splash red here, and I'm running three of them in the main deck. Just an awesome all-purpose spell. Uh, the four damage to the face can serve as a finisher, and having this card main deck is just really awesome up against control, since game one you'll have an answer to Supreme Verdict. The double strike ability, it's the least used one since you'll usually just want to deal the four damage, but if you're swinging in with a Boros Reckoner, a Bramaz, or even Iroas and it's unblocked, or blocked in a way that's unprofitable for you, you can give the creature double strike in response and really blow them out. It's also really interesting if you give an unblocked Precinct Captain double strike, since his token ability will trigger twice for each phase of damage. Then I have some removal in the form of 3 Banishing Light. Uh, I was really, really excited to see essentially Oblivion Ring returning to standard. It's just an all-purpose removal spell that can take care of just about any problems you're having, including enchantments, which are really important since game one you can be vulnerable to them. And finally, getting to have straight main deck removal in a white aggro deck again is awesome. I also have three Spear of Heliod. Aggro decks just love anthems. Uh, the mana cost also, again, helps out with devotion, and the activated ability serves as some more main deck removal. Beyond that, plus one plus one, it's simple, but it's still great. Uh, it turns your captains into three threes with first strike, your reckoners into four fours, Bramazes into four fives, and Iroses into eight fives, which is just awesome. And finally, the last spell I have in here is one godsend. A really interesting card that might be better in older formats with Stoneforge Mystic, but I felt having one in here could be really nice. Uh, plus three plus three is pretty huge, and having the removal on a stick is awesome. I'm not really sure how good this card is going to be, it might turn out to be busted, jam three in the main deck good, or it might just be one of those mythics that's good, but there's just no room for it in standard. I don't know yet, but running one to be on the safe side seems like it could be really good. So that's it for the spells, onto the mana base. Of course, I'm running 4 Sacred Foundry since I am splashing red, but this deck and decks like it are a great home for probably the best card in Journey into Nyx, Mana Confluence. I'm running it as a 4 of, and it really just makes the splash work. 4 sources just isn't consistent enough to get, so before you had to run temples or even guild gates to get the extra sources that you needed for the splash, uh, but now with this you can consistently have the 2 colors and not play a single tap land, which is truly amazing for aggro decks. It will hurt you more and more over time, but if it makes that time shorter by allowing you to kill your opponent faster with consistent mana, it's definitely worth it. Then I have 3 Mutavault. I feel that the mana is good and solid enough with Mana Confluence to support a few of these. It's just another creature to swing in with and do damage, which aggro decks always love. And running 3 of them doesn't mess up the colored mana too much at all. And finally, I have 12 basic planes for a total of 23 lands. So that's it for the main board, let's move on to the sideboard. <music> 
2 Spirit of the Labyrinth is a good hate bear up against control decks running cantrips. It's not going to outright stop a Sphinx's Revelation, of course, but it certainly will slow them down since they'll have to remove it beforehand, which also draws removal off of my more important creatures. Next, I have 3 Fiendslayer Paladin. Uh, mainly up against Mono Black since it has protection from their spells, of course. It will come in against Red decks as well. The Life Link certainly doesn't hurt to race, and the First Strike makes it a great blocker up against aggressive creatures. And finally, the Mana Cost will still help Iroas out, so it's nice to be able to side things in and out uh, without hurting the Devotion aspect of the deck. Just a great sideboard card all around. Two Banisher Priest also helps out in the mid-range matchups when they're running creatures that are bigger and better than yours. It's nice to be able to exile them and still have a reasonably aggressive creature to swing in with. And again, like the Paladin, the mana cost keeps the Devotion stable. Two Reprisal is awesome to have against the big creatures like Advent of the Worm, Loxodon Smiter, Desecration Demon, and Pelucranos. It's pretty rare that white gets direct destroy effects, so this card is awesome in the side. Then I have another Journey into Nyx card in the side, which is Deicide, two copies of it as well. It's enchantment removal, which any and every deck needs right now. It exiles them at instant speed, which is amazing, since all we had before was Revoke Existence, which was a sorcery. And getting to surgically extract all of the gods from their deck is just the icing on the cake. Three Mizium Mortars are really important, since Stormbreath Dragon and Blood Baron of Viscopa have protection from white, so that makes them really difficult to get around in a traditional white weenie deck, so the Splash of Red is definitely an asset here. And finally, I have one more Boros Charm in the side. It will come in in the variety of matchups in which it is good, against Control to have a full four answers to their Supreme Verdicts and Faded Retributions, or against Aggro with the four damage and the double strike ability. So that's it for this deck tech, thank you all very much for watching. To see these decks in action, click the annotation at the end of this video to see the gameplays, and also be sure to subscribe to the channel and like the Facebook page to support the continuation of this project. Thanks for visiting, and if you like what you see, subscribe for more Magic the Gathering content.